This video is on the objective to determine the p-value for a hypothesis test for a proportion, right, a population proportion. Uh, and this is the second video on, the, on a question related to this objective from your homework. Um, so I'm not going to go into nearly as much detail as I did in the first one. I hope you've all watched number one. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the question. So again, if you're unfamiliar with the topic, want to see more about it, what they're doing, click on more instruction, watch their videos, you know, look at their examples, their notes, and hopefully those help. So here, the chief economist of a busy city would like to test the claim that the proportion of housing units that are owner-occupied is greater than 58%. And you see how that's the alternative hypothesis here, P is greater than 0.58. Then the null hypothesis would be that P is less than or equal to 0.58, but you're only assuming the equality part, right? So the, the null hypothesis is that uh, this proportion, you know, the proportion of housing units that are owner-occupied is equal to 58%. That's the null hypothesis, what's being assumed. To test this claim, a random sample of 420 housing units is taken and 252 of them are determined to be owner-occupied. And they want us to find the p-value for this particular hypothesis test. All right. So I'm going to pull up a calculator right now because we can do this right now. So first I want to figure out what's my sample proportion. All right. So we said 252 out of the 420 homes in the sample were owner occupied. So the proportion is, you know, 60%. 60% of my sample homes were owner occupied. And then I find the test statistic. Remember this is a z score, remember because the distribution of sample proportions was normal or approximately normal. So we're going to find the z score for this. So I take away all right, so I take 0.6 and I subtract the mean value of the proportions, which from the null hypothesis we are assuming is 0.58. So I'm subtracting 0.58, which gives me positive 0.02, and then dividing this by the standard deviation or the standard error for the distribution of proportions, which is that square root of P, so 0.58, times 1 minus p, which would be 0.42, divided by n, right, divided by the sample size, which was 420 housing units. And again, make sure all these numbers are underneath that square root in the denominator there. So I'm getting a z-score, a test statistic of 0.83, right, 0.83. Now, this is a right-tailed test, right? The alternative hypothesis is simply that P is greater than 0.58. So this is a right-tailed test. I only need to find the area then to the right of my test statistic under that normal curve. Now I could do that with a calculator, but I could also do it with this table they provided. So if I go to a z-score of 0.83, so I'm in this third row and then go to the fourth column here, 0.83, see this 0 0.797? Now this is the area to the left of 0.83. I want the area to the right. You know, it's a right tail test. So I just take 1 minus this. So the area to the right of my test statistic would be 0 0.203. And that's all I need, right? I don't need to double that or anything. It's not a two-tailed test. It's just a one-tailed, right-tailed test. 1 minus 0.797. 0 0.203 would be my p-value. So 0 0.203. Very quick and easy when you know what you're looking at, right? Find the test statistic. Look for your test statistic down here in the table. Now, again, these numbers are areas to the left, so I need to do 1 minus those to get area the area to the right that I want because it's a right-tailed test. And then I'll submit this, and, you know, hooray, I nailed it. All right, so I did, again, a lot less explanation than the first video. I didn't really write anything out because I'm hoping you watched the first video. 
I already knew what I was looking for this time. And again, please, you know, read through your answer explanations, especially if you got it wrong. You know, to hopefully you can figure out where you went wrong, so the next time you do a problem related to that, a, a similar kind of problem, you'll do better, hopefully. All right. So again, hopefully listening to me here, watching me punch stuff in a calculator, or watching or looking at the more instruction. Hopefully all this stuff is helping you out when you're going through this on your own. And thank you for watching.